This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com, theinformationnation.com. In case you're wondering why I didn't say a word until the bumper music had drifted off, my show got flagged by YouTube. Isn't that wonderful? I had less than 10 seconds of background music and they flagged it. Now, that's um, <clears throat> kind of annoying. You know, you would think that these people would uh, would would ex- would love to have the the extra notoriety for having their songs out there, even if it's just a short little clip, because it, it they're going to end up people are going to hey, I really like that. Where did it come from? They find out, they go buy an album, but. Um, <sighs> This is getting out of hand. It's getting totally out of hand, and the legislation is coming down fast and furious. It's just going to uh, just going to make it to a point. Do you know that if you have a website or a blog and you put a link on your website or your blog and it goes to some music that you can be fined, you could end up in jail because... You're pointing people towards towards music that's copyrighted. You know, the record industry doesn't make enough money ripping off the artists. They've got to turn around, and now they're going to go after the people. Well, I got a hot flash for them because I'm asking all the people out there, all the listeners to the Information Nation, and tell all of your friends that during the month of February, nobody goes to the show. Nobody buys a CD. Nobody buys a DVD. Let them sit there and stew in their own juices. The other thing is I'm putting a call out there to all you independent artists who can't get a record contract, who don't have, uh, you know, you you just play small little gigs in the neighborhood and that. If you've got some music and you want to play it on my show, if you'll give me the release on it, or very plainly, I'll tell you what, I'll run a contest right now. If we can get enough artists to turn around and send me music, and we'll get the people to vote on it, I'll use it for my bumper music, and they can bite me right in my left testicle. Because this is out of hand with these people for crying out loud. It's time for the independent artists to tell these record companies to shove it up their chocolate whiz and let's move the heck on. We can't continue like this. All it is is about money. It's just like them pigs in Washington. It's nothing but money. Money, money, money. Give me more money. Show me the money. And the people that are going to get hurt are the, the, the people that always get hurt, and that's the American people. I mean, we've got that new legislation coming up, the Protect IP. Well, um, Protect IP, that's going to do a wonderful job. Give it a listen, and uh, we'll see exactly what Protect IP is going to do to you. The Internet is one of the United States' most robust and growing industries. It enables free and open communication among billions, and it's been the backbone for protests around the world. But a new bill proposes we give the power to censor the Internet to the entertainment industry. It's called Protect IP, and here's how it works. Private corporations want the ability to shut down unauthorized sites where people download movies, TV shows, and music. Since most of these sites are outside U.S. jurisdiction, Protect IP uses a couple different tactics within American borders. Firstly, it gives the government the power to make U.S. Internet providers block access to infringing domain names. They can also sue U.S.-based search engines, directories, or even blogs and forums to have links to these sites removed. Secondly, Protect IP gives corporations and the government the ability to cut off funds to infringing websites by having U.S.-based advertisers and payment services cancel those accounts. In a nutshell, that's what Protect IP will try to do. But in all likelihood, it'll do something else altogether. For starters, it won't stop downloaders. You'll still be able to access a blocked site just by entering its IP address instead of its name. What Protect IP will do is cripple new startups because it also lets companies sue any site they feel isn't doing their filtering well enough. These lawsuits could easily bankrupt new search engines and social media sites. And Protect IP's wording is ambiguous enough that important social media sites could become targets. 
Lots of trailblazing websites could look like piracy havens to the wrong judge. Tumblr, SoundCloud, and early YouTube, wherever people express themselves, make art, broadcast news, or organize protests, there's plenty of TV footage, movie clips, and copyrighted music mixed in. And even if you trust the U.S. government not to abuse their new power to censor the net, what about the countries that follow in our path and pass similar laws? People around the world will have very different internets, and unscrupulous governments will have powerful tools to hinder free expression. But perhaps most dangerously, Protect IP will meddle with the inner workings of the net. Experts believe by fiddling with the web's registry of domain names, the result will be less security and less stability. In short, Protect IP won't stop piracy, but it will introduce vast potential for censorship and abuse while making the web less safe and less reliable. This is the internet we're talking about. It's a vital and vibrant medium, and our government is tampering with its basic structure so people will maybe buy more Hollywood movies. But Hollywood movies don't get grassroots candidates elected. They don't overthrow corrupt regimes, and the entire entertainment industry doesn't even contribute that much to our economy. The internet does all these and more. Corporations already have tools to fight piracy. They have the power to take down specific content, to sue peer-to-peer -peer software companies out of existence, and to sue journalists just for talking about how to copy a DVD. They have a history of stretching and abusing their powers. They tried to take a baby video off YouTube just for the music playing in the background. They've used legal penalties written for large-scale commercial piracy to go after families and children. They even sued to ban the VCR and the first MP3 players. So the question is, how far will they take all this? The answer at this point is obvious. As far as we'll let them. Since we made this video, Protect IP has gotten much worse and is set up for quick passage. Now, the government and corporations could block any site, foreign or domestic, just for one infringing link. Sites like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook would have to censor their users or get shut down, since they become liable for everything users post. And ordinary users could go to jail for five years for posting any copyrighted work, even just singing a pop song. Isn't that wonderful? Guy takes a picture of his kid dancing. But because of the background music, they're going to take him and take his video down. I've had a number of videos flagged. A lot of them are private. I mean, uh, you know, go to a wedding, you shoot some wedding video, and you got the band playing in the background or the DJ. And I post it on YouTube as private, and I send out the link to all my people, and all of a sudden I get a thing from YouTube. Uh, you've been, uh, you're in violation of the copyright laws. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do with you. We might take you out and execute you. Well, execute this. I'm through going to the movies, and I'm through buying your junk music. You know, if you put out a halfway decent product, you wouldn't have a problem. Your problem is you give people a, 10 songs on an album. One is worth a damn. The rest of them belong in the garbage can and never should have been put on a, on a record to begin with. And you want people to pay $19.95, $24.95. Oh, yeah, but it's your favorite rap artist. Well, I don't care. If rap artists out there, hey, if you're a young, up-and-coming rap artist, you have no contract, and you don't care, and you'll give me, give me the permission to do it, I'll use your music on my show. I'll use it for the bumper music coming in and going out. And I'll give you the coverage. And a lot of them, a lot of you guys out there on YouTube that are doing your own thing, and a lot of you are very good. And the music industry won't give you a contract because you're not dropping down on your knees kissing their butt. All right, we're back. I told you it'd only be about three minutes for crying out loud. Hey, before I forget, and I'll probably won't forget because I'll mention this a couple other times during the show, tonight after my show at 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Pacific Time, the premier show of End the Lie Radio with Ru Madison Rupert. Now, I have been a I've been pushing this for the last couple of weeks, and every time they say, tch, 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 no, 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 not this week, next week. Well, I have been assured that he will be on this week, and that follows the Information Nation immediately after my show. I want you all to stick around. <clears throat> Give him a listen. 
very knowledgeable young man. I think you'll find what he has to say very, very interesting. Hey, as everybody knows, we've got uh, playoffs going on now. And um, I guess, uh, well, the Baltimore Ravens got their, they lost by three points. Oh, poor Baltimore. I don't know what happened in the other game. But something interesting, do you you know that someone tattled on Ravens quarterback Joe, uh, what in the heck is his name, Flacco, for riding a skateboard? Yeah, his neighbor turned him in. It's a story straight out of suburbia. A nosy neighbor sees something riding uh, around on a skateboard and calls the authority figure in an attempt to stop such rebellious behavior. The one key difference following the tale, someone on the skateboard was Joe Flacco, and the authority figure in the neighborhood called the Baltimore Ravens. The quarterback will face the New England Patriots. Well, they lost the game. We know that. I'd never been on a skateboard in my life, so I was literally riding it about 10 feet down my driveway just to see if I could stand on it and stay upright. One of my neighbors must have called called in looking for general manager Ozzie Newsom and left a voicemail on his secretary's phone saying that, hey, man, you got to let Joe Flacco know we're trying to win a Super Bowl around here. He's at home riding a skateboard. Somebody's got to let him know what, what the deal is. We're trying to, what's this we stuff, white man? (laughs) Here you go, people. Welcome to See Something, Say Something. This guy, his neighbor would make Janet Napolitano proud. I saw something. I said something. We're trying to win the Super Bowl here. Crying out loud. That be my team. Damn, Baltimore Ravens. That's my team. He could fall off, scrape a knuckle or something. Your team. You're a moron. It's not your team. He's not your quarterback. If that's your team, why don't you go to your stadium and see if you can get in, just walk through the gate, no ticket. They will give you a place to rest. And that place to rest will probably be the county jail. And then you can stand in front of the judge and say, well, damn, judge, it's my team. Stupid morons. This is is what is coming from see something, say something. People are taking it to the nth degree. On the one hand, you got the entertainment industry that's taking down videos of a three-year-old jumping up and down to a piece of music because, my God, you're using our music and, you know, we're, you're costing us hundreds of millions of dollars. Then on the other hand, you got a neighbor from the quarterback for the, for your, for the football team and you're calling him up going, oh, he's on a skateboard, my God. You know, if I was Joe Fal- Flacco, what I would have what I would have done after hearing about this, and the, the, obviously the man's got a dollar or two, I think what I'd have done is I'd have called a uh, armor car company and told them to be at front of my house at a certain time, you know, when I was going to leave for the park. And then I would have got one of those suits that these dog trainers use to train attack dogs. And then I would have hired like Blackwater. And uh, the truck could have pulled up and it could have had about two or three of those Suburbans, those black Suburbans with the blacked out windows. And the guys could have jumped out with guns. And I could have had a couple of guys come out and they could have been sweeping a driveway to make sure that I don't trip over a, an ant or, or a little stone or something, you know, make sure everything is nice and clean. And I could have this suit on. Then they could come in the house and they could surround me as they waddle me out in this big monstrous suit and put me in the back of this armored car. And they could drive me to the stadium. Because I don't want to get hurt because, <laughs> damn, it's his team. What a load of crap. But that's what it's coming to in this country. My God, you can't skateboard down your own damn driveway. What business is it of this, idiots? Another sports nut. Or just plain and simple, just another nut. (laughs) Be my team. What if he fell down? My God. Ah. We'd have to go with the second stringer. You didn't win the damn game anyhow. But that's not the point. I don't care which one of your your teams win or lose. The point is you're sticking your nose in where it doesn't belong. So that takes you now to the point of surveillance. (coughs) Excuse me. So let's talk a little bit about surveillance. Do you think, you know, I'm getting tired of surveillance. Everybody's surveilling me. I mean, every time I turn around, there there, there they are, and they're sticking their nose up my chocolate whiz wang, trying to find out what the hell's up there. Let's find out how much surveillance we really got. You think that these little cameras on the intersections or something? Listen to this. America's military arsenal. Dropping bombs on Bosnia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Libya, and Yemen. Unmanned aerial vehicles, known as drones, 
have become the trademark of Washington's war missions, targeted assassinations, and spying operations overseas. But today, the local police department's using unmanned spy planes uh, to catch suspects. The remotely piloted war weapon is flying domestic. U.S. local police and federal officials are increasingly using drones under the auspices of keeping citizens safe. Police departments are using them in the United States. There's been, I think, almost 266 applications that have been approved for police departments to use drones as aerial surveillance devices. Drones can be armed with a wide range of surveillance technology, including high-power zoom lenses and infrared ultraviolet imaging. The as the U.S. government flies prying eyes through the sky, lawmakers have neglected to create any privacy protections for American citizens. All of this is conscious and intentional, and they're putting in place a method of controlling a population that may be unemployed and hungry and uh, very angry. And I think that the state and local police are not just militarized, but they're being federalized. The agencies keep them using more and more of these to justify their existence. So then they can say, we need this to crack down on drugs. We need this because there are a lot of robberies in this neighborhood. We need this. The United States is not only now a military industrial complex, it's a homeland security complex. They've merged into one. In 2006, Arrow Vironment, a drone manufacturer, received $4.7 million from the U.S. Defense Department to develop new unmanned aerial vehicles. The newest and smallest invention is Hummingbird, a palm-sized, cute-looking spy plane weighing less than one pound. There can be a very lucrative market in the United States for drones with police departments who are already militarized from tanks to assault vehicles to assault rifles, black jackets, helmets. The modern police look like the military, and so now they're going to be using military equipment. A fresh lawsuit has been slapped against the U.S. Department of Transportation for allegedly withholding records pertaining to the domestic use of drones. Currently, the American public cannot find out why drones are being used, or who is controlling them. Every corner, there's a closed circuit camera watching what you're doing. So now we don't only have them on the ground, we have them from the air. This month, the Federal Aviation Administration is expected to propose new rules, making it easier for law enforcement agencies to fly drones through America's democratic sky. War weapons used overseas to keep the U.S. safe now being considered a serious threat to U.S. freedom at home. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York. Do you hear that James Freeland, that Jake Chink sneak in there? There's a program you ought to listen to, along with all the people on Orion. Those of you who listened earlier got to listen to Joe Joseph and uh, Tim Watts. That was an excellent show out there. You got to tune them in. Hey, everybody tune them in. Tune in on Orion. You'll learn a whole bunch of stuff. Every now and then we get a little bit crazy. No, not us. Not us at all. But anyhow, you see what's going on with your security. You're driving down the highway. You look up there on the corner. It says, you know, this red light uh, video monitored. Yeah. It's all about control. It's all about taking over your life. They want to know every aspect. They want to know when you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. How many kids do you have? They want to know when you play with the kids. Oh, you might have too many kids. Oh, did you and Mama uh, get a little romantic last night? They want to know about it. How many squares of toilet paper did you use to wipe your butt this morning? They want to know everything. Why? I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'll say it till the day I die. The most paranoid people that we have in this country are the idiots running around Washington, D.C. And that's what they're doing is running around Washington, D.C. And you tell the people about things like NDAA and they go, ah, no, it's not going to happen. You know, for this, this, is, this is America. Yeah, well, you forgot to spell it with a K. Yeah, we can't, uh, can't seem to tell some people anything. You know, they think Obama's a great president. Well, more power to him. Doesn't mean a darn thing. 
Either he'll destroy the country or the next Republican will because they're all a bunch of clowns except for maybe Ron Paul, who they've been pushing down and pushing down and pushing down. They haven't got the audacity to even stand up and say, get him on a, on a show and say, what exactly do you stand for? And when he says that he's a non-interventionist, and they say, well, isn't that the same as an isolationist? No, it's not. But they don't listen. They don't listen to anything. How about... State, that, state that's running against the NDAA. We'll play this clip for you right now. When Congress adopted and then Barack Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, Tremendous concerns were voiced over the possibility that this federal act would allow the indefinite and rights-free detention of those who are called, quote, belligerents, even if they are American citizens. In a recent response, one state lawmaker in Rhode Island has jumped into action to protect the danger he sees for residents of his state, proposing a resolution to exempt his constituents from sections of the federal law. Republican Representative Daniel P. Gordon Jr. told WND.com that he has drafted a resolution which is now being circulated among the lawmakers of Rhode Island to express opposition to the sections of the NDAA that suspend habeas corpus and civil liberties. Representative Gordon says, quote, given the fact that the constitutions of Rhode Island and that of the United States are replete with guarantees of individual liberties, rights to habeas corpus, and rights to freedom of speech, the offending sections of that NDAA law are repugnant to the sensibilities of anyone that has a basic understanding of the foundation of this country. Representative Gordon went on to say, when I took the oath of office, I swore that I would support the constitutions of Rhode Island and the United States. And before one single constituent of mine is snatched up in the dead of the night without due process under our laws, they'll have to pry those documents from my cold, dead hands, he said. He told WND the problem is made worse by the wording of the law. It's unclear exactly what is a, quote, belligerent person and who will make that determination. This should be terrifying to all Americans, Representative Gordon said. And indeed, here at P.P. Simmons, we agree. This constitutional atrocity perpetrated upon the American people by the Congress and Barack Obama is a terrifying proposition. This is the very stuff of which the first American revolution was made. That was P.P. Simmons, um, YouTube News. So don't believe me. I don't care. When they take you all away, I guess I'll be the only one left. Me and Barack. Me and Barry Satoro. Maybe he'll invite me to play some golf. And um, how, many, how, many, how many people on this network and other networks and the alternative news media have to continually tell you you're losing your rights? But that's okay. You don't have to have to worry about that. This is America. All you got to do is show me your papers. Show me your papers. And we let you go. We let you go down the road. Yeah. <clears throat> One piece of legislation after another after another in the last three years has um, torn this country apart. And we just keep on ignoring it. As I've said before, the Tea Party, when they, they protested, millions of people across the United States, hundreds of thousands in Washington, D.C., and what did they do? They laughed at you. Eh, AstroTurf. Oh, they're, they're AstroTurf. They, they're, you know, this isn't a real grassroots movement. Yeah, it was. And then you 99 percenters and... Uh, you know, running around going, oh, you know, Wall Street is screwing us. Well, that was kind of organized by the left anyhow, but it's um, same old, same old. So live with it. Don't worry about it. One day we'll all be in jail. We can all have a big group hug in jail and sing Goombaya. 
That's if they allow us to sing Gumbaya. Oh, what more are we going to do? Not a whole lot we can do. I'll tell you what you can do. You can tune in tomorrow night to WTF. I'll be there. Popeye and see if we can drag Joe Joseph. Maybe Jay Jinx will drop in. We have a lot of fun on WTF. You'd enjoy that. Hey, did you know January 8th, 2012, tens of thousands of people took off their pants on the subway in 59 cities and 27 countries around the world? In New York, our 11th annual No Pants Subway Ride had nearly 4,000 participants spread out over six meeting points and 10 subway lines. Enjoy the video. There's, there's a link on my website to the video. <laughs> Ah, the world is coming to an end. We're all going to get locked up. But uh, what's our main concern? Let's all take off our pants and go ride the subway. Oh, that sounds like fun. (laughs) Am I losing it? I mean, is this stuff really important? (laughs) No pants subway ride. Oh, we have people out there that have nothing better to do. I mean, it would have been, you know, excuse me, but... You know, why don't you have a totally nude subway ride? Of course, then again, there's some people you don't want to see totally nude. There's some people out there you don't even want to see without their pants on. But (laughs) why is it we can organize a no-pants subway ride and we can't organize a throw to clowns out of Washington group? (laughs) Is is, it... (laughs) Oh, my God, it's getting bad. Virginia Attorney General fears D.C. law may relocate rat families to Virginia. I think most of you rat families are being relocated from Washington, D.C. to Virginia because I understand a lot of Congress people live there. But it says here to Virginia Attorney General Ken uh, Cuccinelli says he's worried about a new district of Columbia law that it, that governs how pest control operators must handle rats may result in entire rodent families being relocated across the Potomac River into Virginia by D.C. pest control personnel. Lately, there have been reports of growing rat infestations around Occupy D.C. protests at Freedom Plaza and McPherson Square. Cuccinelli said D.C.'s new rat law, the Wildlife Protection Act of 2010, is (laughs) crazier than fiction. Because it requires that rats and other vermin not be killed, but captured, preferably in families. No glue or snap traps can be utilized. Hey, the Information Nation, I'm your host, Ken, on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com. Hey, you can also uh, follow us on TalkStream Live. We're on there. So if you uh, get the iPhone app, and uh, then when you're out with your friends, you can, uh, you know, put it in one ear. and Yeah, you could just stick it in your ear, and you could listen to us. Or maybe hook up a speaker and play it for all your friends. Who knows? You know, we're like manure. We're no, we're not. Yeah, well, kind of like we're all over the place. Anyhow, back to the uh, the Virginia thing. I, to, uh, during the break, I was looking at this thing. It says some of these animals may need to be transferred to a wildlife rehabilitator as part of their relocation process. Now. A wildlife rehab. Apparently, the government is going to psych- give give them psychoanalysis, and you know, have them lay down on a little couch, and they'll talk to them and teach them hygiene and teach them all these real nice things. I mean, how stupid can we get? We can't kill them. We have to relocate them. Let me tell you something about rats. The average rat, if you were to all but almost wipe them out, they more than double, they they would more than repopulate themselves in a year. They carry a lot of infectious diseases, and this this kind of falls right in with the, with the government because they're too damn stupid to know what in the hell they're doing. So we're just going to relocate them because they're such they're cute little creatures. Just because they have, you know, they carry malaria and typhoid and all the rest of the stuff, but that's okay. They're cute little creatures, little four legged creatures. They run across the floor. I get a little white mouse in my house. Yeah, you're an idiot. I mean, (laughs) rats have been responsible for more deaths than just about anybody else. And it's not because they say, oh, no, the bubonic plague. Where do you think they got it from? No, the Black Death. Where do you think they got it from? Rats. Rats populate where people populate. Because they know there is food. 
But rats are immune to all of these diseases. So they just pass them on to the people. And now Washington wants to relocate. I wonder if they'll build them little houses, little FEMA camps for rats. That would be interesting, you know, little little dorm rooms and, you know, little rat managers. And <clears throat> we have a bunch of rats in Washington anyhow. Moving on, Utah School Board says cougar mascot too offensive to women. So, um, oh, yeah, this is a Utah School Board. One Utah school district believes the cougar mascot would be insensitive to women. <clears throat> the Canyon School District overrode the students' top choice for a cougar mascot for their high school that is to be completed in 2013. Would be um, Corner Canyon High School students chose cougars as their mascot. A name principal, Mary Bailey, says is an ugly connotation that it is disrespectful to women. In popular culture, a cougar is a sexually aggressive middle-aged woman who attracts younger men. What's Mary trying to tell us here? Is she offended by the name Cougar? The old broad? I mean, come on. How stupid can we get? You know, they don't want to, oh, you can't call your team the Indians because that'll offend the Indians. No, it won't. Well, what if we call them the Senators? Well, that would insult the Senators. Well, how about if we, no, that'll insult that group. Now we're getting down to the point where you can't, a Cougar is an animal. It is not, you know, a Cougar is a nickname for a middle-aged woman. But... Get your head out of dirt, lady. On the lighter side of the news, President Obama did a wonderful thing. He went to Disney World. President Barack Obama will visit Disney World on Thursday to unveil a strategy that will significantly help boost tourism and travel. A White House aide said today the president will deliver his remarks inside the Magic Kingdom with Disney's iconic Cinderella Castle as a backdrop. <clears throat> I guess that's exactly where his policy should be, is in Disney World. Fantasy land. It's getting to look a lot like Christmas. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind here. Politics, strange bedfellows. And then we move on. Now, anybody, you know, they've been, they've been hammering Iran pretty good. Oh, Iran, they're going to get the bomb. So what? They get bombed. Who cares? They, they run around. They, you know, take off their clothes and dance in the streets. Who cares? Let them get bombed. But the U.S. is to get the drone back that crashed in Iran, an Iranian firm. Now, this you'll like. Now, I don't care what anybody says. The Iranians have a sense of humor. The Iranians do have a sense of humor. An Iranian firm seeks to capitalize on the frenzy that followed the crash of the drone. And Americans call for it to be returned. It is now producing miniaturized toy versions of the craft. Most of the toys come in several colors and are made of Iranian plastic have already been snapped up by Iranian government organizations, according to the group that manufactures them. At least one model, a pink one, has been reserved for President Obama. I can just see him, oh, Mr. President, the drone has returned. Really, where is it? It's in this box. Oh, it's a pink one. <clears throat> and people don't think the Iranians have a sense of humor. I think that's hilarious. I think they ought to send, send the missus one, too. They can send her a red one, send him a pink one. They could send them to all the members of Congress. Here's your drone back. Have fun. Play with your drone. Of course, I think most of them sit in, uh, sit in uh, Congress and play with their drone anyhow. Oh. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for politicians, we'd probably have nothing to talk about. All you'd be doing is tuning into two hours of dead air. It's wonderful what goes on in the world, isn't it? Oh, the TSA to test body scanner operators for radiation exposure. No kidding. The following reports of cancer clusters at Boston's Logan Airport. The TSA is set to test its naked body scanner operators for radiation exposure, but still refuses to test the actual machines that thousands of Americans are forced to pass through each day. After years of rebuffing health concerns over airport scanners, the Transportation Security Administration plans to conduct new tests <clears throat> on the potential radiation exposure from its machines at more than 100 airports nationwide. So you see, it's very plain. They're going to keep the operator safe. They don't give a damn if you turn around and burst into flames. Does somebody get the idea that um, our politicians are totally insane? 
And where in the heck did the TSA get the authority to do anything? You know, I don't care if they sit in Barack Obama's cabinet. Nobody ever gave them authority to stick their hand down, down my pants and play with my fudgies. You know, if you, go to a, if you go to a hooker and have her play with your fudgies, you're going to jail. But if you want a free grope, go, go to the airport. I wouldn't even buy a ticket. I would just go th- keep on going through the scanners. Here, play with me some more there, babe. <laughs> you know, people, how long do you think the TSA would last if everybody said, we're not flying? Do you think that they would continue on the way they have been? Would they continue to be fondling your fudgies, groping your kids, f- playing with your wife? I don't think so. I think very plainly, the airlines would say, look, get the things out of the airport because our business is dying. And you can't afford to bail us out again. But that wouldn't stop our government. They would just turn around and call the Treasury Department and say, print us up a couple more hundred billion dollars so we can bail somebody else out. People talked about radiation from these things. And they said, oh, no, the radiation potential of you getting... You know, radiation poisoning is very low because these machines, you know, it's it's nothing more than you would get, you know, if you went to the doctor's office and got an x-ray. Ask a doctor the next time you go how many x-rays it takes before you have to stop having x-rays in a year. And if you fly more than that, and you've got to figure, once you leave the airport, you get checked. And once you're on the way back, you get checked. So that's two scans, two x-rays every time you travel. So if you travel, if he says, you know, 10 or 15, and you travel, you know, eight times, that's 16. You're over the limit. You know, when you, years ago, I used to work for a company that we uh, went into nuclear power plants and did some retrofits for them. And you got complete body scan when you went in. And when you left, and when your radiation level hit a certain point, that was it. You were off the property. And you could not go back to a nuclear plant for a year. And these people, these idiots, these moronic a-holes, oh, it's not going to bother anybody. The more I see these people, the more I believe that they're inbred. I mean, inbred. I want you to meet my wife. She's also my sister, my aunt, my cousin. Not to pick on the people down south. They don't do that much. For hour number two, this is Ken, your host of the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio, oriontalkradio.com, theinformationnation.com. We're also on Talk Stream Live. Give us a hit. Show us some love. As I was saying, <clears throat> just before we went into break, a Vietnam veteran uh, randomly attacked by teens on Only Street in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, a Vietnam veteran who lost his eye while serving his country, was violently beaten during a random attack by a group of teens on Philadelphia Street earlier this week. The attack happened shortly after 6 p.m. Tuesday in the 5,000 block of North 5th Street in the city's only section. Uh, These animals are specializing on our elderly people out here and the gentlemen who served our country. According to investigator, 64-year-old Edward Schiffer was walking to meet his wife at the bus stop when he was approached from behind by six males. Clay said one of the suspects began to violently attack and the other joined in in a random beating. Suspects then fled the scene on foot after police say a good Samaritan came to the victim's rescue. He fell and that's when I came across the street. When they saw me, that's when they scattered. He was trying to talk and I said, no, stay there, stay there, I got you. Schaefer was rushed to Albert Einstein Medical Center with a fractured skull and several injuries to his face and hands. Those kids are lucky. They're really the lucky ones. That it wasn't somebody like myself or Popeye or Joe Joseph or a real American who would have grabbed one of them and shoved their head through the concrete. You know, you punks don't seem to understand. You never know what you're going to run into. Yeah, okay, there's six of you. 
What if the guy had a 15-shot 9-millimeter and killed all six of you? Then your mommy would be going, oh, my little boy never did a damn thing. I don't know why they, got, they went and shot him. That man ought to be excluded. It's because your little boy's a pig picking on the elderly. What do they think they are, politicians? You know, that's the problem that we have in this country is there, the justice that we have. We're too, too concerned about locking people up who smoke a joint or, or f- miss a child support payment than, than kids like this. I'm not even going to call them kids, scum. We let these guys run around the neighborhoods and every time they get in trouble, some damn snake in a grass attorney goes, ah, you got to understand he was brought up in a poor neighborhood and he never had nothing. No, it's his upbringing, your honor. And then you got some Mamby Bambi judge sitting there going, well, you know, maybe we should just, uh, yeah, we'll give you a suspended sentence and um, <clears throat> don't ever come into my court again. Well, he won't. He'll go to somebody else's court and get the same damn ruling. Be a little bit different if the judge sat there and said, you know, I'm a Vietnam veteran and, um, I think six years, six to ten, ought to suit you just about fine for attempted murder. Because that's about what they tried to do to this guy. I mean, let's face it, it wasn't an act of brotherly love to fracture his skull. But no, we can't have that. We got to worry about some guy that's out there smoking a joint. Of course, then again, he's easier to arrest, isn't he? What did I do, officer? You got any grass on you? Yeah, you want to hit? Uh, come on with me, you're going to jail. Oh, man, wow, three cots in a hot, or three hots in a cot, whatever. We're more concerned about that. Or the poor guy that's out there busting his butt and he can't make his child support payment, or her child support payment, whichever the case may be. Oh, you, you know. They always like to play this thing. Oh, don't you care about the children? No, to tell you the damn truth, I don't. Let mommy or daddy who has custody of him get off of her butt or his butt and supply for these children. They don't understand the difference between, oh, I got a black robe on here, I'll be the judge. The judge going to sentence you to 90 days, boy. You going in for 90 days. 90 days for contempt of court because you didn't make that child support payment. Well, I, was, I tried, Your Honor, but I had to go to criminal court because I had to hold up the 7-Eleven in order to get the money to pay the broad who's sitting on her butt. This stuff tends to irritate me, I guess you noticed. So moving right along, Congressman Joe Walsh, that'd be my guy, calls Pat Quinn a tool. Tea Party Congressman slams Illinois governor. U.S. Representative Joe Walsh has been a vocal critic of everyone from President Obama to typical Republicans. And during a Tea Party meeting in Darien, Illinois last week, he directed his anger towards Illinois Governor Pat Quinn. Well, he's not the only one. This governor, Governor Quinn, is a tool. While said, according to the Doing uh, Suburban newspaper, the state is an embarrassment. People are leaving in droves because of taxes and regulation. One man runs the state, and it's not Governor Quinn. It's House Speaker Mike Madigan. I need more people like that out there. And it's true, Illinois. I mean, (laughs) we're the criminal state. We have no concealed carry. So all you criminals out there that want to rob, maim, and... You know, burglarize, come on to Illinois because we don't have any concealed carry. Although we are allowed to own guns, we just can't carry them. So you can do like they do in Philadelphia. You can attack somebody walking down the street and don't have to worry about getting shot. Beat the death bay maybe, but you don't have to worry about getting shot. And he's absolutely right. Businesses, now what's going on in Illinois is they're, they, he raised taxes so damn high. Com- companies are leaving. But the companies that they want to hang on to, they're giving tax breaks to like Sears and the Mercantile Exchange, they get tax breaks. While the rest of us can go stick our finger up our butt and pivot. Isn't that wonderful? It's just uh, the beginning to look. I'm sorry, I'm regressing here. (sighs) Georgia mom arrested for allowing a 10-year-old to get a tattoo. And here again, what business is it of the government's? If this woman had claimed, well, that's our religious right, you know, at 10 years old, our male children get tattoos, they would have said, oh, okay, it's a constitutionally protected right. A Georgia mother was arrested for allowing her 10-year-old son to get a tattoo, uh, said she had no idea it was illegal for him to get one, even with her consent. Yeah, but your 10-year-old daughter could have gotten an abortion without without your consent. 
maybe not in Georgia, but in other places. The reason he got the tattoo is his 12-year-old brother died by, uh, after being hit by a car. And he wanted it as a memorial to his brother. So they found out about it. They arrest her. So now they've probably, the 10-year-old is probably in the system. She refuses to give them the name of the tattoo artist. Do you see it? Government gets involved in stuff. And before you know it, you're in jail. It doesn't matter for what. Now, you know, your daughter, she wore that skirt a little bit too short. You're going to jail, mama. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm losing it. It just gets to the point with all of the news out there. It, it just gets worse or sillier as the days go by. And you sit down every day and you start doing like myself or Popeye or Joe Joseph or Jay Jink, and you start looking at this stuff day in and day out, and it starts to wear on your gray matter. My gray matter isn't gray anymore. I think it's orange. <clears throat> but this is what happens when government gets involved in people's personal lives. They start taking away your freedoms. And <laughs> it's going to get worse. I mean, you know, a lot of people stand around and go, well, it doesn't affect me. Yeah, but when it does, who's going to be there to protect you? Anybody? I doubt it. Because it doesn't affect them. You know, when the smokers got slammed, a lot of people said, well, I don't smoke. It doesn't affect me. And then the... Uh, Beer and alcohol, you know, that got hit heavily with taxes. And a lot of people say, well, I don't drink. You know, it doesn't affect me. I don't drink either, but very plainly, it pissed me off. Because I got sick and tired of the government telling everybody what they can or cannot do. You know, then they take away a little, oh, they're putting up cameras. Well, I want, you know, they stick their hand down your pant and pants and play with your junk. And you go, but I want to feel safe. Why don't you ask the guy while he's got his hand down your pants? Do you find anything safe down there? The Information Nation, I'm your host, Ken, on the Orion Talk Radio Network, OrionTalkRadio.com, TheInformationNation.com, and Talk Stream Live. You know, we're on there, too. Go over there, show us some love. Boost us up in the ratings. You know, on Monday nights, we have a program on uh, Orion called WTF. And that's where a group of us get along. Get along. <laughs> uh, get together and... Uh, Oh, we discuss a whole bunch of things. And we do get along. We got a lot of, a lot of good hosts from the uh, shows here on Orion. And uh, I was happen I happened to lean my hands on something that Tim Watt did up for us. And um, there is no um, copyright law infringement here. It's just something that Tim made up for the show. And I think you find it very interesting. So give it a listen. The following program is not for the faint of heart. Sophomore humor and potty mouth trash talk and discourse will be prevalent. Please check your sensitivity at the door. This is not your grandmother's talk radio. You have been warned. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Under 17, not admitted without parent. What the fuck? You've just made it through the first and worst day of the work week. It's time to kick it with Orion Talk Radio's Monday Night Roundtable of irreverent banter and radioactive talk. Because this is where we tear reality a new a-hole. If anyone asks what you're listening to, you just tell them. What the fuck? What the fuck? Release the hands! They know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They just strut. What the fuck? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't hear you. I was staring at your breath. What the fuck? This stuff can give you brain damage. You said it, Buster. <laughs> hey, what? Wee! Woohoo! Oh, boy. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Scotty, beat me up. Uh oh. This is Jay, the most acid I've ever seen anybody eat in my life. We have ignition. Two, one, zero. We have a liftoff. What the fuck? They know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They just struck. What the fuck? They know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They just struck. What the fuck? What the fuck? Ladies and gentlemen, 
My mother thanks you. My father thanks you. My sister thanks you. And I thank you. Excellent. Is that rocking or what? <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, that's kind of been the buzz for the last uh, few days around uh, Orion. Uh, and <laughs> that, that song just rocks. I don't know what the heck to tell you there. But that's what you'll get on Monday nights at 10 o'clock on WTF. Bunch of crazies sitting around having a good time. Irregardless what Bob Tuscan says, it is not the information clearinghouse. This is the information nation. Yeah, uh, Bob's a good guy. That's my rabbi. I'm not Jewish, but he's still my rabbi. What can I tell you? Anyhow, back to all this good stuff that the government's going to do to us or for us or whatever. Um, LAS, LAUSD students roundly reject healthier school lunch menu. The revamped school lunches at Los Angeles Universe Unified School District have won awards commending them for improving the menu at the second largest school district in the nation. Too bad the students don't agree. Rejecting their healthful alternatives like vegetarian curry, curries, curries, and tamales, quinona salads, and pad thai noodles. Students are throwing them in the trash by the thousands, bringing junk fruit from home and buying instant noodles or other del... <laughs> decidedly unhealthy fare from black markets that have begun to thrive at campuses across the district, according to the Los Angeles Times. <laughs> this is pretty good. We have a black market in food because the kids turned around and said, you know, they, they, they go, this food is healthy. And the kid looks at it and goes, it sucks. It's going in the garbage because I got to go talk to my buddy over there, you know, and get a, get a few black market candy bars or something. It's going to be the young people that are going to pull us out of this. I mean, you know, the rest of the, the older people are too set, set in their ways. You know, oh, I got, got my mortgage to pay and I got to pay for that new Cadillac Escalade. And um, you know, the young people are going, I don't like this garbage. I'm not going to eat it. The heck with you and throw it in the, throw it in the trash. So in the meantime, you know, somebody's got to do something. At least these kids are fighting back. Where the rest of you? You know, that's what happens when you interfere in a kid's life. Kids just want to be left alone. They want, you know, hey, okay, I'm going to school. I'm learning some stuff. But other than that, don't force me to eat your garbage. You know, come on, lady. You know, you look at it and the kid says, what is it? I don't know. I stepped in it before, but I've never eaten it. And these, these, these people, these adults think that, well, you know, these insubordinate children here, you know, they should know better than that. You know, people are starving and... In Africa, well, send it to Africa. <clears throat> but stop trying to shove your junk down my throat. I don't want to eat this stuff anymore. But, you know, week after week, we have the same thing. We can find articles from just about anywhere. This one comes from the Los Angeles CBS Local.com. We find them everywhere of things that the government is doing that people are just saying enough is enough. We can't keep going this way. We're not quite sure which way we want to go, but this is not the way we want to go. And uh, <laughs> we just keep on talking and keep on talking and keep on talking. And, you know, we have the primary that just took place in uh, was South Carolina, North Carolina. I don't want to the Carolinas down there. I get the two of them confused. They're kind of like brother and sister, identical twin brothers and sisters. You can't tell them apart. But um, <laughs> if, if you've paid any attention at all to these primaries, if this isn't, if this isn't rigged, in your face, flat rigged, I don't know what is. It's just every damn time you turn, oh, well, Newt's ahead. No, Mitt's ahead. No, Mitt, Newt's ahead. Newt, Mitt's ahead. And Rick Santorum is the beaver. And people aren't saying anything. They're just, uh, they don't see it. They don't see what's going on. They don't see the fact that we're losing everything. For what? So we can make some rich people richer, some poor people poorer, and we can kill the other people. That's okay when your kid goes off to Iran or to fight Iran, because we are going to end up in a war with Iran. <clears throat> 
and he or she does not come back or comes back extremely injured, just remember something. They went over there to fight for no other reason so some rich man could be richer. So, um, I don't know what the heck to tell you. It's um, continually going downhill, but I don't want to bum you out tonight. I've done enough of that for a while. That's about all the bumming out you're going to get from me. Say the magic void, the parrot will fall down and poop on you. <sighs> Anybody know what happened in the other football game tonight? Yes, we are back for the last half hour of this show. This is Ken for the Information Nation on Orion Talk Radio. OrionTalkRadio.com. TheInformationNation.com. Um, <laughs> let's cheer you up a little bit. Geothermal test will pour water into volcano to make power. <laughs> Geothermal energy developers plan to pump 24 million gallons of water into the side of a dormant volcano in central Oregon. This summer to demonstrate technology they hope will give a boost to the green energy sector that has yet to live up to its promise. The test, will, uh, test well is drilled for geothermal project at Newberry Volcano in 2010. They hope the water comes back to the surface fast enough and hot enough to create cheap, clean electricity. That it isn't dependent on the sunny skies or stiff breezes without shaking the earth and rattling the nerves of nearby residents. Let's see here. We are so damn concerned about having a pipeline from Canada down to Texas that we can't have. But hey, let's see. Let's take and pour 24 million gallons of water into a volcano. Which asshat thought this one up? Do you know what you get when water hits molten rock? You get what's called a, photo, a photovolcanic, photovoltaic reaction. That's the same thing they're talking about with Fukushima. You're going to dump the water in there. It's going to become steam very, very quickly. And it's going to go. <laughs> and we'll have scientists uh, leaving uh, Oregon, landing in New York City. Or thereabouts. Oh, they're not going to drive by car or take a plane. They're going to fly, though. Hydrovolcanic explosion. Thank you, Jules. I mean, what kind of what kind of a meathead thought this one up? Oh, I, you know, uh, it's hot down there, and if we can uh, we can dump water down there, you know, what uh, the the water will become steam real quickly, and it'll come right back up, and uh, we can generate electricity. Uh huh. Then two 24 million gallons of water hitting molten rock real quick could cause a nice explosion for you. It won't shake the earth. It'll blow it up, and it won't be rattling the nerves of nearby residences. They'll be wondering, where the hell's all this rock rain coming from? Are you talking about hard water? Yeah, we've got some scientists out there. It's got to be a government project. I bet it's been approved by the Obama administration. Yeah, oh, let's see if we can do this. You know, it's like saying, what, well, I wonder what would happen if I stuck a pencil in my eye real fast. Would it hurt or wouldn't I feel it at all? Gee, I know somebody's going to do it and then they're going to turn around. They're going to sue me because I suggested it. Ah, who cares? I just wonder if these people even think. Where did they get this guy from? What oh, was there a blue, blue light special at Kmart for? Oh, we need a uh, ge uh, geothermal uh, physicist here. Uh, uh, we got him in uh, aisle number three. It's a blue light special today. You can get him. He's very cheap. He's not too bright, but he's very cheap. And the government, will, okay, we'll pay him a million dollars and uh, we'll give him 24 million gallons of water and we'll pour it into a volcano. Uh, that's the equivalent to what they did at Fukushima. And uh, Oregon will be relocated. Probably be right in between Ohio and you know the Tennessee Valley area. But they don't care. They want to find out what happens. Give you a suggestion. Makes very, very big noise. Goes boom. Oh. Jules, is going, Jules in the chat room says, don't get me started on fracking. <clears throat> Where do you think this fracking idiot came from? So anyhow, Jules... <laughs> 
Oh, are we having fun tonight or what? I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you people anymore. It's, it's getting stranger and stranger by the day. And we just keep on keeping on. Yeah, sometimes you wonder, if why don't they get some very intelligent children? You know, the, the kind that, you know, it's sixth grader and the fifth grader, that they do the little science projects and the science fair, and they know darn well, you know, <laughs> you don't pour water in a hot volcano and you don't pee on the alternator on the car while the car's running, even while it's not running. But... Um, this is what they're teaching our children in college. They're not too bright. Well, anyhow, a while back I played a clip for you, uh, Aaron Russo, and he explains why America is not a democracy. Give it a listen and uh, see what you think. The, the American people are living in a matrix. They don't understand the truth of how things are working in this country, you know? And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. The very fact is that if you, if you ask 100 people on the street, what kind of government is America supposed to be? 99% of them will tell you a democracy. America is supposed to be a democracy. But that's a lie. That's an illusion. The word democracy is not written into the Constitution at one time. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. The founding fathers hated the idea of a democracy. They thought it was the worst form of government there is. And I agree with them. Because in a democracy, 51% of the people control 49% of the people. If you're part of the 49%, you're not free. America was founded as a constitutional republic. And in that constitutional republic that we have, 99% of the people can't take away the rights of 1%. You have your rights because you were born with them. You have God-given human rights that nobody can take away from you. The government, the majority, no matter who they are, I can't take away your rights. And that's what, that's, that's what our founding fathers gave us. But the psychological operations that they, they do to us, they make us believe that we're a democracy and that majority rules, you see? And they want you to believe that. Because then they tell you this poll says this many want this and this many want that and this many want this. And it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Well, Hitler was elected. Hitler was elected. Hitler did everything legally. And in a re constitutional republic, a minority is, pro is protected against a majority. Wasn't it Benjamin Franklin, to paraphrase, that said, democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner? Exactly. And then he also said, in a republic, the sheep would have a gun <laughs> 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 to protect himself. You know? And that's, that's, that's the truth. The, the, the America is not a democracy. But you ask the most intelligent people what form of government America is supposed to be, they'll say democracy. Because that's, that's what they've been brainwashed. They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying democracy means freedom. No. Democracy equals new world order. Democracy equals slavery. The word democracy is not synonymous with freedom. It's the opposite of freedom. Democracy is the worst form of government you can have. It's the majority rule. And the government can tell you exactly what they want to tell you to do. Because the majority wants it. I don't care what the majority wants. I live my life as I choose. And if I don't commit violence, theft, or fraud against another human being, I can live my life as I wish. That's my choice. And if I'm allowed to make mistakes, because when you make mistakes, you learn from them. You grow as a human being. We're put on this earth to become the best individuals we can be, to fulfill our God-given potential, right? We're not here to put on this earth so the government can tell us how to live our lives and what we must do. We put into these systems and these paradigms. No, the same thing in health. You know, if you're sick, you have to have a certain protocol. Nonsense. You know, be individuals. Think for yourself. Have critical. Have critical thinking. That's been sent so many times on this radio station, I can't even count them. Not just by me, but by a lot of people. Critical thinking. Critical thinking. That's essential to keeping your freedoms. We talk about it every night. I mean, I give you article after article after article, and you can go on my website, the inf information, and I can't even talk anymore, theinformationnation.com. All of these articles are there, and look at them. 
I'm not going to give you something that I made up. I can back up everything that I say. Here's the article here. This one with the geothermal test that comes from USA Today. It's on my website. Go see it. Go take a look. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Hello. We're back. For the last 15 minutes of the show, I'm your host, Ken, on the Information Nation. Uh, information Nation. <laughs> ah, we're losing it tonight. <clears throat> Not Orion Talk Radio, OrionTalkRadio.com, the Information Nation.com. Try saying that three times fast. Um, you heard what Aaron, uh, Aaron Russo said, you know, that uh, people have just got to wake up to what's going on around here. And um, I don't know how many of you know about Mark Levine. He's another radio show host at another station. I won't mention which one. But uh, here's what he has to say about uh, the United States. It comes from CNSNews.com. What is happening to this wonderful country is a crying shame. So distant is America today from its founding principles that it's difficult to pre precisely describe what kind of country it is. And when I speak of country in this regard, I'm talking about the government. We can't really describe it as a constitutional republic anymore because the Constitution has been and continues to be easily altered by a judicial oligarchy that mostly enforces, if not expands, a statist agenda. Can I really be called a representative republic? Because so many edicts are produced by a maze of administrative departments that are unknown to the public and detached from its sentiment. Can I really be called a federal republic? Because the states that gave the central government life now live at its behest. So what is it? It is a post-constitutional government transitioning into an increasingly powerful utopian tyranny. We start from the premise that the Declaration of Independence asserts a truism, that we are endowed by our Creator with unalienable rights, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In other words, individual sovereignty is our heritage as human beings and Americans. This is the legacy bestowed on successive generations by the Founding Fathers. This is the nature of man. This is who we are. The purpose of the Constitution was and is to establish a federal government to secure a society that protects the individual's unalienable rights, not devours them. Thus, the Constitution's division of power among three branches of the federal government. Its enumeration of specific powers to each branch. The adoption of the Bill of Rights. And as if to put an exclamation mark behind the federal government's limits, the ratification of the Ninth and Tenth Amendments. And if the debates during the Constitutional Convention, and if the text of the Constitution itself do not make this clear, do not make clear what the framers intended in this regard, which they most assuredly do. The Federalist Papers and the notes of the ratification debates in the several states and the arguments of the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists make it unequivocal and without question. I know it was Mark Levine, um and I, there's a fair use clause on this, so YouTube, bite me. I don't really care anymore. It's going up there whether you like it or not. You know, a lot of times people talk about a constitutional convention. We need a constitutional convention. We need to get things straightened out. We need a constitutional convention. That is so wrong. And I mean so wrong. And the reason being, you think you've got it bad now, you get a constitutional convention and they will take away everything. Because that opens up a constitution. They can say, well, you know, we just want to correct a few things. <clears throat> the few things that they want to correct are going to be your freedoms. 
A constitutional convention opens up the entire Constitution, not just one little corner of it. That's what you, you want to make a change, that's what you have amendments for. That's why there are amendments to the Constitution, which have to be passed by Congress, and then they have to go out to the 50 states, and they have to get a majority to vote for the amendment before it becomes law, which they never did with taxes anyhow, but they said they did. They lied again. But when you have a constitutional convention and it's opened up to anything, that means that the handful of people at that convention have exactly, have the power that the states had. They can make changes, do anything else they want to do. And you know where it's going to end up. Your freedoms are going to be gone. <laughs> That'll probably be coming, and the people go, ah, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good thing to me. I mean, well, you know, we could, we could use that. The Constitution was there to restrict the federal government from doing what it's doing. The three forms of government that he spoke about are not the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the presidency. No, you have the judicial branch, which is your Supreme Court. You have the executive branch, which is the president, and you have the Congress, your legislative branch. Those are your three branches of government. They are the ones, two of them handle the law, handle the uh, write the laws, and one of them interpret. And that's all the Supreme Court is supposed to do. They're not supposed to say, well, you've got to do this. They're, they don't legislate. They are supposed to interpret a written law against the Constitution and say yay or nay. But they've gotten so far out of hand, it's not even funny. That's how we end up with things like the TSA. That's how we end up with all the rest of the stuff, the groping, the FEMA camps, and everything else, and all, everything else that's coming down the line. And this president that we've got, this Nazi president, and that's right, I called him a Nazi, TSA, Homeland Security, all the rest of you people out there, FBI, CIA, M-O-U-S-E. If you're listening, yeah, I called him a Nazi. He's a fascist Nazi. Well, if I can't get Congress to vote on it, I'll just go around Congress. I'll go around the Constitution. When are you going to put him in jail? When are you going to put that lying tick turd in jail? Congress won't do that because they usurp their, usurped their authority a long time ago. They're nothing but a bunch of puppets, too. That man belongs in jail. He's, 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 either, he's either an alien, and I don't mean from outer space... Or he's a felon. Which is it? You went to school on a, foreign, uh, on a uh, foreign student scholarship. Well, if you're not a foreign student and you did that, you committed a felony. On the other side of the coin, if you are a foreign student, that means you have no right to be the president of the United States. You have no right for one because both your parents were not born in this country. And that was a Supreme Court ruling that not only the, the child... But both their parents have to be American citizens. That's why Marco Rubio cannot be president of the United States or vice president. Because his parents were not born here. So basically what they're telling you is you have to be second generation full-blooded American before you can run for president or vice president. But they'll throw that out the window too because it doesn't really matter to them. As long as they can get what they want. As long as they can make their rich friends richer and the rest of us poorer. As long as they can enslave the population and get, them, get us to do what they want us to do. That's what they want. They don't want. They, they, they could care about anything else. That's what they want. So anyhow, it's been a long night. It's just about over. So I do want to tell you people, ladies and gentlemen, directly after the Information Nation, Madison Rupert, and the live radio. Hanging out with him tonight will be Jules. I recommend you tune in. Very sharp young man. Give him a listen. Other than that, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for, for hanging out in the chat room and listening on Orion Talk Radio and on Talk Stream Live and even Micro 1650 AM. You know, we, uh, we try to put on good programming for you. We try not only to entertain, but to keep you informed. Uh, occasionally we have a giggle. Some nights it gets crazy. Don't forget, tomorrow night we have WTF. 
and I'll be there, and Popeye will be there. Jules will probably be there. If not, we'll drag her out of her house kicking and screaming and force her to be there. No, we wouldn't do that to Jules. She's wonderful. Oh. You know, the, the people at Orion, all the hosts, we appreciate the people that tune in. And uh, I don't know what more I can say about that. But when you are appreciated... So keep tuning in, keep getting informed, keep learning a few things. Hey, even I, I, even I learn a few things every now and then. 